My name is Huda Fadul Abacha. I'm the CEO, Hudaya Couture, co-partner in Hudaya by Couture Living, and I also run a school, Hudaya Fashion Academy. I went to University of Abuja. I read microbiology. I graduated 2008 and went for my youth service that same year and finished 2009 in the civil service. That's where I realized that I can't, um, this regimented life is not for me. I decided to go into business and uh, try little things here and there. So I started with um, interior deco. I was doing like throw pillows, beddings for people, curtains. From there I started doing chairs for people and then minor, minor renovations here and there. And it was going so well and it was growing, but um, I realized I wasn't really passionate about it and I was more passionate about fashion. So I decided to direct my energy into fashion. So I knew what I wanted to do, so I registered the business and I decided to start small. For the interior decor, I didn't need any place, I didn't need an office. So when you offer me the job, so you tell me what you want, I go and source for it and then I come and help you with your house and whatever you needed me to help you with. But for the fashion business, I needed a place and I could not afford a place. So I started from home. So I got one machine, one tailor. So, and when I started the business, I was mostly making clothes for friends and family. So when they tell me what they want, I was good with designing, I'll take it to him, he will make it, I deliver to you. They couldn't come to my business space. Until about a year later, and I was doing so well, so I decided to write my business plan and take it to my parents to support me. So, and I had to show them what I was doing, and I had to show them what I was saving. They agreed to support me, but not um, the way I wanted. So they supported me to start extremely small. I got a small place, I fixed it up, and then I started the business from there. Luckily for me, I was already making for so many of my friends and family, and they all decided to patronize me. So we started with three machines, we're making clothes for them, and from there, one tailor became, two, three tailors became four, and then they became five. But um, it's not as easy as it sounds. At that time, when I started the fashion business, I didn't have any training whatsoever in fashion. I just knew I was passionate about it and I wanted to do it. I didn't have any background knowledge. I didn't go to school for it. And there were not much fashion schools back then. So it's like you had to learn on the job while you learn from your mistake and your experiences. So I had to go back and do a course in Dubai with my friend and then come back and I realized a lot of things were possible. But most of your tellers will tell you, as they like to say, you know, go do. You can't do it. It's not possible. All the time, whatever you want, is not possible. So it took a lot for me to come back, come back and train them the way I wanted. For them to, everybody has a unique signature, a unique style. So if you are always just doing what the tailors want you to do, you would never have your own identity. So I had to take a step back and make a difficult decision. Those that were not willing to follow my vision, my idea and what I wanted, I had to let go of them. And I had to stick to the ones that were willing to learn and create my own styles the way I want. So in the process, I lost a lot of tailors. I lost a lot of clients because we're not able to deliver because we're short staffed. But at the end of the day, with the, the few that were left behind, we managed to work and grow from there. And then we had other people come join the team. And from there it got better. And also when I started, like we had so many issues with light electricity. So as a small business owner, it was very hard for me to be able to buy a Nikano generator. So it took longer to break even in the business. But I was patient and I knew that this is what I wanted to do. So I was focused, I was patient, and with time, we managed to overcome these issues we're having. Hodaya is not just a business for me. Hodaya is personal. It's, it's very special and dear to my heart. So I take my business personal. Now, for me, I, I love to do more of bridals. So my brides are very special to me. So when the brides come, it's not just about the bride coming and telling you, here is my fabric, I want you to make this for me, or I want to make that, or telling you, oh, this is the raining color, this is the in color, I want to use it. Now, we take our time, we advise you on the colors that work best for you, we advise you on the fabrics that would flatter you, we advise you on the styles 
that would flatter you also putting into consideration your own vision your own idea of what you want to look like and then advising you on if it works best for you or not so we give you advice and try to bring the best of you out instead of just agreeing to whatever you say even if it suits you or not and aside from that it goes beyond that with hudaya it's like a one-stop place you come so one way or the other we try to be there for you not just by making your wedding dress by making your life easier and making other things easy and more accessible to you so whenever people see the brides and they're looking beautiful and who made the bridal outfit oh it's hudaya now that also puts you out there and also now social media it's one of the veritable tools out there for you to advertise yourself on a global platform with Instagram, Facebook and other things, people actually get to see your work and it's been seen worldwide, not just within Abuja, Nigeria, Africa, other places as well, because we have clients calling from America, from London, from Guinea, from different places to place order for their dresses and book appointments when they're coming back for their wedding to make their outfits, which would have not been possible if not for social media. So social media is life. Like initially when I started Hodaya, it was Hodaya Couture, which limited my options for business, which made it seem all about clothes and fashion. And I want to do more and I want to do other things that have nothing to do with fashion. So from there now I decided to open the Hodaya Fashion School. It's more of giving back because I was thinking how to impact other people's lives, how to impact young upcoming entrepreneurs, how do you give people a chance, like a chance that I never had when I was starting my business. So I decided to start the fashion school. So most times we get NGOs and other people like in the business as well to sponsor people to the school for free. So we train them, we educate them and then they start their own businesses as well. If you come to me and you want to be like Hudaya, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Are you passionate about it? Are you willing to dedicate your life, your time, your energy to this? Are you strong-willed? Are you thick-skinned? These are questions I'm going to ask you because um, being in the fashion industry, no matter what people tell you, it's not as easy as you think. It's not as glamorous as you think. Beyond the red carpets, the fashion shows and the glam and whatever people perceptions people have about this fashion industry, there is a lot of work that goes into it. There are times you would wake up and you just want to give up. There are times that you get blocked, like you can't even get inspired. There are times you wake up and you're frustrated, nothing is going your way. So what you do during those times determines your business and how successful you're going to be. If you're going to quit, if you're going to give up, if you're going to give in, all, or are you going to stand up and fight for what you have? So these are questions that I would ask you. And if all your answers are yes, 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 then by all means, you should start and you would succeed. But I would also tell you to, first of all, before you start the business, you should go, for a fa go to a fashion school, understand the basics, learn the business from scratch. You need to be able to learn how to handle your finances. So I would advise you to go to a business school. Then when you're done with all of that, I would advise you to go and intern for an, to another business. Go and intern in another business that's doing the same thing you want to do. You either intern there or you work there temporarily to understand how to run the business, how the business is being conducted on a daily. So when you learn all of that, you have a higher chance of success than just going into it blindly. It was easier for me because I didn't know all of these things and I had to learn on the job. But back then, I don't think there was 1,001 other people competing with me. But in the past um, two years, I think in Abuja alone, they've opened over 700 fashion houses. So the competition is real. You need to know what you're doing. You need to know what you're getting yourself into.